customers take in the look of your store, forming an impression and making a judgment in seconds. So it's important to get the look and feel of your store right first time and keep that image going. First impressions don't just start when a customer enters the door. Getting signage and the external look right is the first consideration. Signage to the store is perhaps more important for some than others, depending on how much the business relies on passing trade or how easy it is to find the shop. Some retailers will say that everyone knows where we are, but that's not always true, and the chance to attract a passerby or motorist all surely helps. Signs are really important for village retailers, especially directional signs which help people find you. Local authorities don't like what they call signage clutter and typically won't grant permission for directional signs or even brown tourist signs can be very expensive to obtain. Here we can see a sign on the side of a fence which is one option or the corner of a field. It's increasingly difficult to get that but really important if you can do it, it can be a great example. Externally, presentation is more art than science, and the decoration and fascia of the store will potentially be more about the image it portrays to the target customer. A shop in a village by the coast with lots of tourists will be looking at presenting a different image or brand than a store on a new housing estate, because the target market is very different. The outside appearance of the shop is vital. It tells customers what to expect once they get inside the door, and indeed it encourages them to do so. Local people really want their shop to be theirs and that very often means having the place name, the name of the proprietor or some other local aspect on, on the fascia. However, for passing trade, for motorists on a busy main road such as this, it's quite important to have the reassurance of a known fascia, um, in this case Londis. This particular shop tries to combine the two with some success, that for the locals they see the sign that says Blackman Stores for passing trade, then the Londis provides the reassurance they're looking for. It's important shop fascias, posters, window graphics and signs should be clear and simple to understand, using as few words as possible, describing a clear menu of what you offer in store. Having the name above the door, uh, for us, where we are on a main road location with a very small frontage, we suffer a little bit with the TARDIS effects. We've got a big store internally, but a very small frontage. So for us, we thought perhaps by having a recognised name above the door, people would see that and associate that with the type of store that we are. Whatever your image and branding, it's getting the basics right that's most important. Ensure windows are clean and don't have the backs of shelving units showing. Ensure windows are free from adverts. It's good community engagement to display local notices, but keep them to a minimum, or ask the parish or town council for a dedicated notice board, or a board you can use. Make sure delivery crates and cages are hidden. Make sure forecourts are free from litter, and ensure flower displays are well kept. Maintain external lighting to ensure the shop is well lit in those dark mornings and winter evenings. A shopkeeper should ideally walk through the front door every morning as a customer. When entering a store, the sight line is an important first impression. We will cover layout and merchandising in our next film but want to emphasise that having a good display on entering is really important. Well stocked, faced up and merchandise shelves look so much better than a half stocked poorly merchandised shop. This will make customers feel more confident. End gondolas are really important for retailers. They're placed at the end of the aisles where most people can see them and they're really important for promotional but also for seasonal display as well. You see here this, this gondola end is used for promotions and it's really important to, to have the, the point of sale material to really highlight the products. The shelf ends and the gondola ends, what you do see there particularly near the till is you just see those impulse purchases and at the minute in our store we've got stack displays now we've started to in implement stack displays of uh, a, a mega deal which we run every month through our symbol 
Uh, and without a doubt, you just see people pick the product up. They had no intention of buying that when they come into the store, but because it's right beside them when they're in the queue and they think, oh, that's a good deal, I'll just pick that up. We've created our own point of sale. Uh, we feel it gives everything a more personal touch um, and it's all about Ludwell stores and the choices that we make. Um, we know about the products, we know where they're from, um, we usually know who's made them um, and that's very important to our customers. It means we can talk about nearly all the products that we have, especially all the local ones. In the convenience store world, which we increasingly see as the mould traditional village shops fit into, the numbers of non-associated or independent retailers have been in steady decline, whilst the numbers of retailers trading as symbol group members have increased. The dilemma of whether to trade under a symbol banner is one many retailers will consider at some point. The symbol versus staying independent debate is really difficult for many retailers. There's pluses and minuses to both options. Many people go down the symbol route simply because they like to have that recognised fascia, especially if there's a lot of passing trade to the shop. But independents, they really worry. People in the village may not accept them as, as readily and as easily. So it really is a difficult debate. So it is a dilemma, and we have thought about it, but we like being independent. Every time you pick up a trade magazine or you look through one of the brochures or you, you, you're constantly looking at what symbols are doing compared to what you can do. Is a symbol good for us out here in, in, in our rural environment where, uh, you know, to be, to be quite honest, a lot of the people that live here are, 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 are relatively well off um, and, and does a symbol attract them? Will it attract them more? Or alternatively, those people that are on holiday, does a symbol fascia give them confidence to be able to know what the offer is? Joining Premier was a relatively easy thing to do. Little changed, um, signage outside the shop, um, signage inside. The team came in and merchandised the shop, which they did very well. I found that difficult, actually, somebody interfering with my shop. Uh, initially, that was, that was not easy, but they did a good job and they did the right thing. The disadvantage of being an independent is that you don't have the support or the backup or the different people to talk to. Some people don't see it as being our shop anymore. They think it's part of a chain. Repeat customers soon realise that that isn't the case. You have to make your own decisions in life, don't you? It, cer it was certainly right for us. The debate will go on, but whether you're a symbol store or not, keeping up high standards and professionalism is a must to ensure customer confidence and loyalty. Part of this can be ensuring you are keeping up with new store trends and investing in refurbishment and redecoration. Supermarkets will typically refurbish their stores every three to five years to keep ahead of the game, as will many progressive convenience stores. Unfortunately, village shops often suffer from underinvestment, which can start to put off new generations of customers who have high demands, having grown up with modern supermarkets. Refurbishments come in all shapes and sizes, some expensive, others less so. But no matter what the cost, they can do wonders for the look and ambiance of a store. The owners of Delhi on the Square in Praise and Beeble matched a £30,000 European grant through the Cornwall Development Company to enable them to extend the shop and improve on-site catering facilities. We first took over in 2009. Um, the shop was really small and two people in the shop and it was cramped. Uh, people would feel rushed into purchases and probably wouldn't spend the time that they could do in a normal shop. We started to work with the landlord and decided that it would be a good time to extend the shop. The build took three months, and it was definitely a demanding time for Nick and his staff, working around the mess and keeping the builders happy. Importantly, during this time, they kept the shop open, maintaining a value service to the community, and critically, keeping the till ringing. I wish I planned it better, and maybe if I'd done a project similar in the future, I'd get some help with that sort of side of planning. Despite the challenges of the refit and extension, the new shop is now fully operational and both the owners and customers are reaping the benefits. It's just so much easier to see everything and a lot more stock in there that, you know, 
they couldn't hold before and it's just you don't feel you know it's a small little shop it's a nice shop for the village i think it's a wider range of stock you know instead of having one choice of one item you can have two three choices of that one item and you know anything like that you just helps the shop a bit. It's nice for elderly people as well. They've got walking sticks or they bring the, you know, they have the dogs outside so it's obviously they can get in because it's obviously a bit more spacious in there. It's definitely been worth it. In the first four months after the extension, till sales went up by 30%. The feedback we've had from customers has been brilliant and I'm really proud of what we have here as a new shop. In this film, we've explored getting the look and feel of your store right from first impressions through to the best tips for keeping the interior and exterior looking good. We've considered the symbol group debate and shown how a small makeover can transform a store. In our next film, we look in more detail at optimum shop layout, merchandising, the importance of getting stock range right and introducing new opportunities in store. For more details on the Store is the Core programme, visit storeisthecore.org.uk.